This is the final form of my 3x2 macro pad. The hand wired, semi hot swap but fully 3D printed macro pad with rotary encoder, per key matrix LED lighting, and loop gate run red switches. All of course compatible with Vial. And you can build your own for less than 56 euros. All this assumes Amazon prices, and you will have 4 switches, 94 LEDs, and 4 rotary encoders left over. All files are linked in the description below, and you can even get the step and Fusion 360 source files if you want to modify anything. We will also take a look at how to utilize this most efficiently. Consider subscribing and leave a like if anything of what's coming next is useful to you. The build of this one is quite simple. The case is just 3D printed and you don't even need to do any post-processing, like sanding, filling, priming, spray painting, and adding clear code. But I did that because I wanted to redo the case after I did the prototype in white PETG. If you followed my series on this macro pad, you will notice that I'm still using the same hot swap sockets, but I soldered the wires on the back so that this time they're overall more rigid. I did design a new version of these hot swap sockets that should increase the contact accuracy as well as how simple they are to solder and assemble. But now these do not use the clips anymore, so either you need to solder them or you use the wire twisting method like I did on the 60% build. This new case has a few improvements. First, of course, there's the hole for the rotary encoder, which supports the click and separate keybinds for both the turn direction. That can also be switched for each layer, by the way. Then the bottom plate now has a lip on the lower part and a groove on the inside to click into the case. So no more need to getting the press fit exactly right and also no screws for opening the case. The microcontroller, however, can now be secured with an M4 screw, which overall makes everything a lot simpler to secure. Building this when you have already built one of the previous macro pads is quite simple. You can just solder the hot swap sockets on the back where the clips were for added rigidity and then lift each switch from the hot swap socket and remove the entire wiring from the case. This is super fascinating to look at to just have the entire wiring construct just held in mid-air. As you can see I already soldered the LEDs and the rotary encoder on my prototype. The LEDs just need one data pin, ground and power. They then get chained together with the correct spacing. I printed this tiny spacer to slot the LEDs in to make the soldering a lot easier, by the way. I'm using this pack of 100 WS2812B LEDs that cost around 16 euros. Then for the rotary encoder I got this 5 pack for 9 euros, even including knobs. But I will just print my own anyways. The 3 pins are for the rotation and have one ground pin and two data pins connected to the microcontroller. The switch, the two wires on the other side, will just be placed on the matrix and I will just add another column for it. You also need a diode for this one. I also placed two sheets of paper under the LEDs for some diffusion that you can just add if you don't want to get the RGB shadow casting effect. That occurs when just one color on the LED is covered from a specific angle and you get some quite weird looking shadows. If you wire your version like I did here, you can just flash the VIO compatible hex file and configure your keymap. By default I mapped some standard keys to these to make debugging hardware issues a lot easier, including the rotary knob. In Vial you now get a lot of settings for these LED effects. These can even react to your key input as all LEDs are assigned to a position on the matrix. We will dive deeper into LED control in another video. Trust me, there is still a lot we can add to this that's actually really useful. On the rotary knob we can set things like volume control and mute on click, which is the most basic example. But as this is just like normal key presses, you can get creative here. Some examples to get you started. For example, switching between browser tabs with Control tab and Control shift tab, with open bracket and close bracket to adjust the brush size in Photoshop, the rotary knob just feels nicer than the normal key presses. Left and right to scrub frame by frame in your video editor, also works for animations in Blender by the way. Control Z and Control Shift Z to undo and redo steps in most applications, but this is specifically nice in drawing apps. You can also use more than one if you just map one of the macro keys to switch to a layer momentarily, and then add the other rotary encoder mapping on the layer. Now I hear you say, this macro pad only has six keys. Don't worry, you can just use LT to switch the layer, and then you also have another key on press, while the other function gets shown while it's being held. Another way would be to use the knob press to toggle between the layers. You just set up a key on the knob to switch to the next layer permanently, 
and then on the last jump you jump back to the first layer. Now your macro pad has 24 keys, not counting the knob click. All this has made my streaming on Twitch a lot simpler. To switch between OBS scenes and showing custom lighting effects on the macro pad as stream alerts. But that's something for another video. For any more questions, join the discussion in the comments, hop on my Discord server, or check the chat when I'm live on Twitch. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!